So now quickly discuss what is the result we are going to get for this. So we are going to state this for a particular case. So let gamma is equals to 0 and Okay. So notice that like we are setting this gamma to be 0 in this statement. So when we have this gamma equals to 0, so we are just going to call this exp4, but when and the, the case when gamma is greater than 0, kids, when we are this algorithm we are going to call exp4 ix, okay, when gamma is greater than 0. But the result we have stated here for the case gamma equals to 0. And you can work out that for gamma greater than 0 also similar bound holds. Okay. So now let us revisit this theorem. What we are saying? Take gamma equals to 0 and you set your eta to be in this fashion and then assume that experts are deterministic. Okay. What I mean by deterministic here is yes, experts are actually giving me a probability vector, but it is going to be the same every time I give a particular context. Okay? And we are also assuming that these experts are oblivious. What does that mean? So that whatever based on whatever the rewards they are going to get right, they are not going to change their distribution accordingly. So you, in a way you can, so this means like you can assume that that each expert has already come up with what is the distribution he is going to put on each the arms for each context and he is not going to change with what is the reward he has been observing so far. So that is his, his what is the context he observes that is irrelevant to him. You just tell me what is the context and he will just tell you what is the distribution. In that case then the regret we are going to get is Square, uh, under root of 2 t k log m. So this looks very similar to what we had gotten for exp3 right except the fact that this is now m instead of k. So the regret bound you have exp3 was 2 t k log k right where k is the number but now that k has become m now where m corresponds to the number of experts. Okay. So the proof we are going to skip uh, 
I mean, I'm just there is one lemma which uh, you need to get to prove this. I'm just going to state this lemma. Even that proof you can work out. Uh, it says that for all. Okay, so this is a lemma uh, proof based on the. It says that for any m the t equals to 1 to t, let's t, t tilde t m minus So what this lemma is saying is, so what is this term giving you here? So let us take an M, an expert, what is this term giving you here? All right, so if you look into this XT tilde, right, what it basically give? The, the expected estimated rewards for that expert M, right. So, in that way, we can treat it as the total reward that has been obtained by expert M, okay. And then we are comparing it against what is this quantity over here? So, what is Q to N? Yeah, this is the probability with which I am going to choose expert N in round T. And what is this sum is going to then give? The expected rewards that I would have got from the experts. Okay, so it is basically going to say how is the reward gotten from one ex expert compares with the mean that would have got from all the experts and it is going to bound and eventually this I'll, uh, I mean this theorem uses this fact to bound it. So just to look into the book like uh, how to get this. So and using all these things finally we are going to get this as upper bound. Okay. So we will just uh, skip it uh, I mean it, most of the proofs are very similar to what is there in PXP. 3 again. Okay, the ideas are all similar expect, ex, except for the fact that now we have to take into account uh, two level of randomization into account. One with respect to the experts selection and another with respect to the arm selection. Okay. So now let us uh, discuss couple of special cases. Earlier when we started this was by saying that I am going to take my phi to be phi 1, phi 2, some phi or phi could be all mapping from C to K. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so that standard assumption we make that the rewards are in the interval 0, 1. This x, x t vector, right, or x t i is in 0, 1, okay. Suppose this c is finite. I mean the cardinality of c is finite and there are k arms. What will be the cardinality of this set phi? What is it? k to the power? So, this is going to be k to the power cardinality of C, right. So, in this case, if I took a particular phi, it is going to assign one value in k to each context, right. So, in terms of if I am going to think that as a probability vector, it looks like a unit vector, right, where for that particular arm it is going to be 1, for others it is going to be 0. You got this point? So, if I take a particular map here, it is going to assign a unique value to each value, each context here, but I can think that assignment as a probability vector, as how I can assume that E M I is equals to, so let us say I am going to index this all the features. Let us call them m1 all the up to k to the power c, okay. Then I am going to think that E m i in round t is nothing but indicator phi of whatever. Let us say this uh, Okay, so what I want to write here is let us call my functions here as let them enumerate, let them call this f1, phi1, phi2, phi3 all the way up to phi to the power phi k to the power c. Okay, I have these many maps. Then can I map it? The, rec the value recommended by expert M or the value recommended if I am going to treat it as a map is nothing but this, right. So, okay, so let us say for each of these experts, there are k to the power cardinality of C experts and I am going to treat them, these experts are nothing but these functions. Okay, so now experts are nothing but these functions. So what are going to they going to re, uh, if I am going to give a particular context, what they are going to return me? It is they are going to return me the arm that should be selected according to that phi in that round, right? Or based on that. But in terms of the probability vector, I can write like this, right? For the mth, for the mth expert, I can just write it as like this probability vector. So this is just going to put value one on whatever the value this uh, function assigned to that context t, and everywhere it is going to put the zero, right? So in that way, I can treat all the poly, all the maps here is as one different different. Uh, experts and uh, we are already in this setup, right, where I am going to set my ET function EMI to be exactly like this based on what is the map I am going to use in that round. So now then even if I have a, uh, all my, if I am going to uh, define my regret in terms of these policies, all possible phi, is this regret bound still applies? Yeah. 
it should apply right it is just like uh, the experts are nothing but these maps here and uh, they are also they, even though they are not giving distributions that i can treat that as a distribution now if i am going to apply this bound on this what is that i am going to get yeah so in that case i am going to replace m by so in that case what is this p okay but what is this regret bound like we had gotten this regret bound by other method also right what was what was that method yeah by applying exp3 for each of the context if i maintain my exp3 for each of this context i would have obtained this then what is big big deal about this algorithm then why why is this uh, why this i should uh, why this is of any interest okay yes yeah so this uh, so when if i have to write this bond it depends on the cardinality of c when i applied all this algorithm when i was in this setup i only cared about the number of experts i didn't care about how many possible contexts are there whatever the context i have i'm just going to give it to an expert and that expert is going to give me a distribution on my arms right so this bond only worries about how many experts are there it i don't care about how many contexts are there as long as i have finitely many experts this bond works right and often i may not as i said often we will not be working with all the possible maps we will be working with the a restricted set of experts as i said like that uh, as i discussed in the beginning of the class that restricted class could be based on the partition or similarity or you are going to just only fix the number of uh, fees to be finite like one, fee 1 fee 2 and up to fee m so in that case there you have only finitely many m and uh, irrespective of how many contexts you are going to deal with this bound is valid fine so yeah Mapping so you, you are mapping this. This yeah yeah this. yeah. Even in this, we would require the number of contexts to be finite. That's how the we have gotten. The yeah, yeah. So number of contexts is finite. Yeah, this number of contexts is finite. Yes, but it could be arbitrarily large, right? Uh, which I don't worry about here. Capital M is equal to that. Uh, Yes, when you are going to deal with all possible maps, I am just giving you the worst case when you are going to deal with all of them. Because see, when I worked out with uh, maintaining one context, exp algorithm for each context, right? I didn't care about how many policies I will be competing against. It was just like maintaining one. Uh, exp3 for each one of them and that blind that gave me this bound but here i'm why well, i'm deriving it based on how many experts i'm i'm going to deal with you will take it to to be a much smaller set than okay. yes i can take but uh, the number of context could be same here still here though this experts i have only m experts here but the number of contexts i'm going to deal with could be same as this case also right. So in this case, you see that I got log m, but here it could be uh, cardinality into log k. It could be much much larger. Yeah. 
if uh, the number of contacts is very large. Okay, so with this uh, we will conclude this uh, discussion on uh, uh, adverse cell contextual bandits. We will not go into the lower bound proof and uh, for all for this. As you see, uh, do you expect this bound to be optimal? You expect it to be simply square root Tk or M should come into picture. Yeah? M should be there uh, or uh, at least order wise it you feel okay square root t we know that we can't do better than that fine. Maybe like k also I can't get rid of because from the adversarial setting I also know that it is like square root t k right. So for us now the new term that has popped up is log m is that log m is the best or we can do better. I also don't know, uh, maybe uh, it's similar in some sense to the weighted majority theory. Yeah. So in that there is that log d term is there. Log m is somewhat similar to that log d term, where d is the number of experts in it. Yeah, but uh, we don't know weighted majority is the best. I mean, whatever the bound we got, that is the best we could get. That is full full information, whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, that is there in yeah, K won't be there because it's a full information case. We are dealing with the bandit case here, right? So K will come into picture definitely because we are having only one kth of information compared to the full information case here. Yeah. 